And I have to say it was a great conversation that um, you had with um, Ms. Josephine Koma. And we're hoping that the parties will all come around and ultimately we'll have some consensus on the subjects. Yeah, and we're pledging to support the work of the NCC, advocating for there to be more funds and also for corporate Ghana to help them because it's a good thing that they're doing at the NCC. In the end, uh, we blame them. We tell them that they are not educating us enough. Uh, all right, uh, we have to talk about some other issues that the president uh, talked about yesterday. One of the, <laughs> the, so first of all, we've been going on and on and on about how the president has not talked about men's gold, at least until before, yesterday. Before yesterday. Okay. Uh, Stone Boy, I remember, also came up <laughs> recently to say, to ask the president to say something about men's gold. We've had a number of demonstrations. The last one was in the, uh, the Western region, uh, men's gold customers. And in a lot of the demonstrations, you see that they're holding, they have different messages. And sometimes the messages are directed at the president. So it was a good thing the president talked about men's gold. And you heard it, uh, no, I think we want to play exactly what the president said. He talked about the banking situation and then talked about men's gold and did mention uh, a setup of a certain uh, advisory uh, institution, if you like. But let's hear the president uh, say it in his own words. Sectors emerged stronger from these developments has began to re-inspire confidence in this. In all this, I've been anxious that our local banks are helped and given as much support as possible, which has been done. But I'll not be on the side of criminal behavior if that is discovered. I would urge that we are all patient for the investigations to be made in a calm manner. Again, while I'm on the subject of rogue activities in the banking sector, this is probably the time to mention the men's gold debacle. This is a tragic phenomenon that appears to have occurred in plain sight and affected a lot of people in spite of warnings from official institutions. As the authorities try to unravel the intricacies of what happened, I admonish all Ghanaians to learn the necessary lessons for the future, even as state institutions work to bring a resolution to the matter, and those who are seen to indulge in criminal activities are brought to justice. Last week, I inaugurated the Presidential Financial Stability Advisory Council, an interinstitutional consultative coordination body which groups together all the regulators of our financial system, and whose purpose is to advise the President on the measures to be taken to preserve the stability of the financial system. The existence of such a body would have forestalled the emergence of the men's gold saga and will make it difficult in future for any such scheme to get off the ground. So learn the lessons. I leave it to the state institutions to unravel what may have mm -hmm. uh, gone wrong with men's gold. If you're a customer of men's gold, uh, first of all, what do you make of the comments by the president? We've been asking him to say something. He has indeed said something. But what does that mean to you? And that's why we're speaking, Roland Walker, to uh, a, a lawyer for some of the customers of men, Men's Gold, Amanda Clinton, to get her thoughts uh, on the president's comments. Roland? Yes, and good morning to you, uh, Ms. Clinton. Good morning. Okay. Now, what will be your own remarks about the president's uh, comments in the first place? I, I think it was very um, apt. It was very articulate. Um, and, and he's absolutely right that, you know, the men's gold saga means that in future, you know, that people are a bit more cautious. Um, in relation to the institutions, um, In relation to what you said about the institution, um, I would argue that, um, you know, although warnings by um, officials in terms of institutions, warnings aren't enough. You know, it takes the shutting down of institutions. And if we know 
that as of the 14th of August 2018, Yoko issued a formal complaint with criminal attachments. It took five months for, you know, bank accounts to be frozen and, you know, everything else to follow. Um, so although the institutions are working to bring a resolution to this, SEC had already taken a position. Um, Bank of Ghana says deposit taking is a no-no. This institution was taking in millions. So we already, to some extent, know that the institution should not have been taking in that sort of money. But it's a welcome thing that the president, you know, did make a statement and that he did advise in future, you know, that Ghanaians should be a bit more cautious. Um, but in future, it is for Bank of Ghana to monitor large transactions coming into account and perhaps raising the flag in the first instance before millions of dollars was pumped into this company. And it's good that you're, rep you're representing the clients of Men's Gold, but more so the complaints over the period have been about how they can't get something, I mean, just literally, uh, out of those investments that it puts uh, into the firm. Do you think the steps that have been announced by the president, and of course the caution or the moral advice, is, is enough to give some remediation and some satisfaction to the clients in the first place? Well, it's always a welcome thing that the president addresses this and, you know, he deals with the fact that it occurred in plain sight and it's affected a lot of people. But we cannot um, underestimate the strength of, for instance, Bank of Ghana, SEC, Yoko, I mean, everybody closing down this institution well before 2018 um, because... It's not about warnings. When the public thinks that, you know, that there's treats to be had and there's suspicion that the institution isn't good, you shut them down. You don't just warn. Do you see what I mean? So it, it was a welcome thing that the president made a statement. But when millions of dollars have been pumped into a company and Yoko issued a formal cr criminal complaint as the 14th of August, so much time passed before the freezing of accounts. Um, and Bank of Ghana, even if you have like a $100,000 transaction, you know, it gets flagged. Do you see what I mean? So, so why wasn't it flagged on all levels? Mm. And do we really need an advisory council? Which is, it, it's nice. But Bank of Ghana regulations, SEC regulations, Bank of Ghana oversight, you know, all these institutions exist to first and foremost stop deposit taking on a large scale, spot scams in terms of you set up a sister company so that people go and deposit money there, then you walk fake gold to the company. You know what I mean? The yeah. regulations are there to spot scams and to stop deposit taking. You know, a second year banker could have looked at this. It doesn't need a special team. Bank of Ghana is there, SEC is there, Yoko is there for economic and organized crime. Do you see? So it, it is really important in future, if any institution is deposit-taking on a large scale in millions per transaction, in thousands of dollars per transaction, it gets flagged right at the beginning, mm. and the institution is closed down. It's not just warnings you know, before thousands and thousands of people start investing in a non-financial entity that was men's gold. And saying that, especially coming from you, does it mean that then it all suffices? The president's own comment on it. Because the president says, well, the criminal actions and the procedures based on what the regulations are should now be um, triggered. And we all know what the regulations say. That is, if we're able to place men's gold, whether on the SEC or any of them, and right now we know that it will be on the SEC. And we know mm -hmm. that the steps that need to be taken and whatever gains there would be ultimately for the customers if, if they have to get anything at all from their investment. So the matter closes. Well, the matter shouldn't close because we just have to cast our mind back to June 2018 when the whole GFA um, debacle was happening. And 
the government said it was public interest. So before the CID file was open, bank accounts were frozen and buildings were earmarked and everything was shut down within 24 hours and before the CID file was open. And that was GSA that didn't affect, you know, so many people. So the question we would have to ask is that if men's gold affected so many people, and if as of the 14th of August 2018, Yoko issued a formal criminal complaint with attachments and sent it off to CID, etc., mm -hmm. why was everything not frozen? People stopped from traveling, um, buildings earmarked. Well, 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 well uh, I do understand that. So, so Miss Clinton, so, so what do you want done then? You want some, something to be done in retrospect? Is, is, is that, that people no, should be punished? I, 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 I sort of want a sort of a public inquiry as to why um, the, the, the machinery did not freeze everything before the investigation just because of the large amount of money involved. And to preserve, you see, in the GSA case, they said they wanted to preserve assets in case anybody started taking the assets away, etc., because they had the GSA in court. This was this involved so many people. Why didn't they preserve the assets before the investigation began? And the investigation could still be going on, as it is with GSA. Do you see what I mean? So we could have done this earlier, number one. Number two, perhaps it's a lesson for the future. And number three, on a practical level, assets needed to have been earmarked and still need to be earmarked. And so the government has, has you know, thankfully reacted or to, to everything. But it also means that if they didn't preserve assets, the government should be at the forefront of um, ascertaining international assets and then issuing um, mutual legal assistance um, uh, documents from Attorney General's department to international institutions in order to claw back assets. Because the other directors are still at large, which are family members of NAM1, and assets have been, we assume, you know, taken outside the country. Mm. So the Attorney General Department can start issuing mutual legal assistance um, agreements, and, and then we can trace some of these assets and bring it back. Uh, Ms. Clinton, my name is Mamavi. Just the last question that we want to ask you. Have you been following the legal processes that NAM1 is supposedly going through in Dubai? Yes, we, we, we have been following it, but we haven't had independent confirmation of a case or a case number, which would be helpful, um, or, um, you know, necessarily who's bringing the action since Horizon say that they didn't bring the action against Nam One. So we, we very much would like independent confirmation at at least a case number of, of, the, case, of the public case in, in, in Dubai. Mm, okay. Ms. Clinton, we thank you for your time. Uh, we continue to wish you well with this case, this ongoing case. Amanda Clinton is lawyer for some of the customers uh, of Men's Gold. They've got their investment locked up, and all they're asking for is for the uh, monies to be given back to them. I think ultimately that's uh, what's the interest and the advocacy that so far has been undertaken by the customers of Men's Gold has been. Uh, I, the, I think the president's speech is good. It's a, it's a good intervention. It also gives way to say that government is sensitive to the applied. Does it bring back the money? It doesn't. Okay. And that's where the problem lies. All right. Uh, stay with us. This conversation will certainly continue. Uh, but up next, we're talking to the National Theatre. They've got the new drama. They will share details with us on the show next.